Hey guys, it's Tamara coming back at you with another video. Welcome back to my channel. We're going to talk today about another topic for our psychotherapy crash course this month. Um, we are also going to switch gears a little bit and start talking a little bit more um, about specific diagnoses and I think that's going to be an important thing for us to talk about. So we're going to switch gears on Wednesday and heading into Friday we're going to do some other videos but I wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit today about substance abuse and in this video I'm going to talk specifically about marijuana. It's a pretty uh, <laughs> politically charged topic and uh, I certainly don't want to delve deep into the politics of it but I do want to bring up some concerns that I have regarding marijuana use, especially amongst adolescents. So the benefits for you today in this video is that you're going to be able to identify some neurological and neuroscientific terms. And I want to bring up some things that I think a lot of us fail to recognize and realize about our brain when it comes to marijuana or THC, uh, especially among the developing adolescent brain. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, and I encourage you guys to comment on this topic because I know it's a pretty um, charged topic today. Um, so I encourage you to list your questions and your comments in the comment section box below. All right, so so my personal view on marijuana as a therapist, you're probably wondering where I am with that. Um, so it's a complicated topic. And uh, just because I understand the neuroscience of it, I've seen the neuroscience of it in many of my clients. I've seen uh, the after effects of it in you know previous friends and extended family. And basically my ethical foundation is that I don't like anything that alters or transforms the brain in any fashion. That could be prescription medication, that could be alcohol, that could be marijuana, ecstasy, heroin. I'm not a supporter of things that negatively or has the potential to negatively alter or impact functionality, right? So let's start with the brain science. So our brain is made up of a host of neurotransmitters and I'm going to post them around us so you guys will be able to to follow me. So we have three important neurotransmitters that function in our brain. One is serotonin, the other is norepinephrine, and the other is dopamine. And these three brain chemicals are typical brain chemicals that affects how our body responds to the external world. When neurotransmitters or chemicals, right, dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin, when these chemicals fire in our brain, they create a cascade of chain reaction events. And those events have a lot to do with how we think, how we act, how we feel, you know, how we, you know, see the world, how our brain conceptualizes the world. And it has a major impact on adolescents because adolescents have a, a uh, mini version of the brain, uh, of an adult brain, right? Their brain is not fully developed yet. So they have a mini version of an adult brain. So there's another neurochemical, however, or neurotransmitter that a lot of you have probably not heard. Um, and the name of the neurotransmitter is glutamate. Um, or GABA. And basically that particular hormone or neurotransmitter, and I want to make sure that I put this in my notes because I'm going to add it for you um, in the um, uh, YouTube description box. I want to add some of these terms for you. But GABA and glutamate, right? Same thing. Uh, they are also chemicals. That is also a chemical that is transmitted in the brain. It's very, very important for the regulation of chemicals and other bodily uh, systems to make this very basic for you and practical. Now, there's another chemical known as the endocannabinoid. In that part of the brain, a lot of people believe that it influences our ability to get high, right? The endocannabinoid system influences our ability to get high. It actually doesn't. Um, a lot of people think that the endocannabinoid system in our in our brain 
allows us to smoke a joint and get high. Um, you know, contrary to popular belief, that is not true, right? The endocannabinoid um, is a part of the brain that sets off a cascade of series, I, sh I should say a cascade of events, a series of events, chain events in the body. When the endocannabinoid system is manipulated, right, we do notice certain effects. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit more about this endocannabinoid system in terms of um, marijuana. Uh, but first, I want to focus just a little bit on the psychological and emotional sides of marijuana use. Okay, so um, adolescents, let's start with the adolescent brain. Okay, so adolescents have a developing brain. The brain doesn't fully develop until the age of 26 years old. Until that time, the brain is going through a multiplicity of um, structural changes and chemical changes. When another chemical comes into the picture and begins to alter things in a developing brain, trouble is likely to occur, right? Excessive marijuana use while the brain is developing can lead to memory problems, attention problems, mood problems, anxiety. It can also lead to psychotic-like behaviors because what you're doing in a developing brain, because the brain doesn't develop fully until the age of 26, what you're doing by altering the brain that's already being structured and processed and developed is getting in the way of the typical process and the healthy process of brain development. That's the scary part, because once you alter it, and if you continue to alter it with excessive use of a drug that alters behavior, you're not only likely to become hooked, but you're likely to slow down important processes that you need to function in the adult world. Attention, memory, patience, right? The ability to regulate the frontal lobes, which is an area behind the forehead, the frontal lobes help a lot with decision making. It helps a lot with impulse control. It helps a lot with personality formation. Without the ability to regulate impulses and make appropriate decisions, right? And 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 allow your, your personality to develop appropriately, adulthood is gonna be tough to navigate, right? So excessive marijuana use at young ages can lead to problems. Now, when we talk about adults who use excessive marijuana, um, we don't have those brain issues as often, um, and the brain issues are not as severe, okay? Do I think that marijuana is, is negative for adults? Absolutely, I do. And one of the reasons why is because, again, it's a chemical that you are putting in your body. I don't care how natural somebody says it is, it's a chemical, okay? Um, anything that alters the natural formation of the brain can be detrimental. Even vitamins that are, are used can be detrimental. Even essential oils can be detri detrimental, no matter how healthy and natural they are. So I firmly believe that anything that alters the natural formation of the body can be detrimental. It doesn't matter what it is, it can be detrimental, especially when used in excessive amounts. Adults who utilize marijuana excessively are altering not only behavior, not only emotions, but thought patterns and neurology. And that can't be good for everybody, right? Excessive use of a drug that puts you under the influence really does numb you, right? You're asking to be numbed, whether it's prescription or marijuana. Now, the only difference with prescription drugs is that most have been tested and most have been, um, uh, for lack of a better word, strained, right? Like a strainer uh, that you like use to like drain your food, right? Most medication that is prescribed has been strained, right? It has been um, tested, it has been um, evaluated. Marijuana, on the other hand, especially if it's not a medical type of marijuana, might have all kinds of substances mixed in there, right? Rat poisoning, acid, antifreeze, you know, heroin, little, little, you know, uh, ecstasy, right? So, so marijuana that's purchased on the street, we're not really sure what's in that, 
right? And anything that's mixed in there can, can affect the brain in, in detrimental ways. This is not healthy for mood disorders and mental disorders, primarily psychosis, right? So let me give you an example. So let's say that you are utilizing THC, which is altering all those brain chemicals I talked about at the beginning of the video. And let's say you're doing that three times a day, every day. That's a lot, if you count it up. Three joints a day, every day. That's a lot, even if it's a joint every day, that's a lot. Um, think of your brain in terms of a, a light switch, okay? So let's say you go into a room at night and you know how it is when you go into a room at night, right? You open a door, the room is dark. You flip the light on, you can see everything. When you are sober, it's like flipping on that light in the dark room and you're able to look around and see everything. When you utilize marijuana or any kind of a drug, even prescription drugs that aren't appropriate for you, it's like turning off that light switch in the room and everything becomes dark and everything becomes skewed and everything becomes difficult to conceptualize. That's what happens to an adolescent brain or an adult brain who excessively uses a particular drug. Marijuana or not, it's a drug. Um, and I think a lot of people miss that. A lot of people feel like, hey, it's natural, I'm good. And that is not, that is not true, okay? Um, excessive use can lead to psychotic symptoms. Individuals who have been diagnosed with schizophrenia, right? When you're hearing and seeing things that aren't there, when you're delusional and you're having uh, beliefs that are not proven true, and you strongly believe them no matter what, um, and the belief is just bizarre, uh, or it doesn't make sense, or it doesn't line up. Um, schizophrenia and other psychotic disorders like that are negatively impacted by marijuana and other drug use, and sometimes even prescription drugs. Bipolar disorder can be worsened by marijuana and other drugs, right, that are used in excess. Um, so I think that's important to keep in mind. And I know you guys are probably uh, thinking some things and you probably have some questions about this. So we're going to continue because I want to continue talking about the neuroscience of this. And I want to give you some background information on how this affects the brain. And I want to be able to give you uh, some much needed information. But in the meantime, guys, if this video was helpful for you, I encourage you encourage you to give this video a thumbs up if it was encouraging to you. I also encourage you to comment in the comment section below. Um, I look forward to your questions, your concerns, your experiences maybe, and even some of the research you may have heard. What do you think about it? Um, I think this should be a conversation that we should have within our community. Um, if you want to keep up with the upcoming videos, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button on the side. That way when I post a video, you will be notified. Uh, but in the meantime, guys, I wish you all the best. Stay tuned for the next part of this video, which is going to be part two, and we're going to talk about the neuroscience of what these drugs do, including prescriptions. All right, guys, I'll see you soon. Bye.